Jannah, an eternal place for Muslims, is the Islamic conception of paradise. The Arabic word Jannah is a shortened version meaning simply, garden. According to Islamic eschatology, after death, one will reside in the grave until the appointed resurrection on your Malki Yama. Muslims believe that the treatment of the individual in the life of the grave will be according to his or her deeds in the worldly life. Jannah is often compared to Christian concepts of heaven. According to Muslim belief, everything one longs for in this world will be there in paradise. The highest level of paradise is fear doors, which is where the prophets, the martyrs, and the most truthful and pious people will dwell. In contrast to Janna, the words Jahannam are used to refer to the concept of hell. There are many words in the Arabic language for both heaven and hell and those words also appear in the Quran and Hadith. Most of them have become part of the Islamic traditions. Descriptions of Paradise the descriptions of paradise are mentioned in significant detail in the Quran, Hadiths and traditional tafsir. Paradise is described as surrounded by eight principal gates, each level generally being divided into a hundred degrees. The highest level is known as Fyodors. It will be entered first by Muhammad, then those who lived in poverty, and then the most pious. Entrance will be greeted by angels with salutations of peace or as salamu alaykum, gardens of perpetual bliss. They shall enter there, as well as the righteous among their fathers, their spouses, and their offspring. And angels shall enter unto them from every gate. Peace unto you for that ye persevered in patience. Now how excellent is the final home, Quran, Surah 13, Ayat 23-24 The Islamic texts describes life for its immortal inhabitants is one that is happy, without hurt, sorrow, fear or shame of where every wish is fulfilled. Traditions relate that inhabitants will be of the same age, and of the same standing. Their life is one of bliss, including wearing sumptuous robes bracelets and perfumes as they partake in exquisite banquets served in priceless vessels by immortal youths, as they recline on couches inlaid with gold or precious stones. They will eat foods and fruits continuously up to forty days, and every bowl will have a new taste. They will take a ructation which will digest the food and there will be perfumed sweating for the digestion of water. Inhabitants will rejoice in the company of their parents, spouses, and children, conversing and recalling the past. Other foods mentioned including meat and wine aromatic which non-intoxicating and bring a joy to those who drink. The dwellings for inhabitants will be pleasant, with lofty gardens, shady valleys, fountains scented with camphor or ginger, rivers of water, milk, honey and sharab and tahura, delicious fruits of all seasons without thorns. One day in paradise is considered equal to a thousand years on earth. Palaces are made from bricks of gold, silver, pearls, among other things. Traditions also note the presence of horses and camels of dazzling whiteness, along with other creatures. Large trees are described, mountains made of musk, between which rivers flow in valleys of pearl and ruby. The names of four rivers are Sihan, Jihan, Furat and Nil. Salsabil is the name of a spring that is the source of the rivers of Rama and Al-Kathar. Sidrat al-Muntaha is a lottery that marks the end of the seventh heaven, the boundary where no creation can pass. In spite of the goodly dwellings given to the inhabitants of paradise, the approval of God and nearness to him is considered greater. According to the Quran, God will bring the elect near to his throne, a day on which some faces shall be shining in contemplating their Lord. The vision of God is regarded as the greatest of all rewards, surpassing all other joys. Conditions of going to paradise According to the Quran, the basic criterion for salvation in afterlife is the belief in one God, last judgment, good deeds, and in all the messengers of God, in Allah's angels, as well as believing that Muhammad is the final prophet of God, essentially the belief in Islam. Though one must do good deeds and believe in God, salvation can only be attained through God's judgment. Conditions of going to paradise according to the Quran 
those who spend, whether in prosperity or in adversity, who restrain anger, and pardon men, for Allah loves those who do good, and those who, having done something to be ashamed of, or wronged their own souls, earnestly bring Allah to mind and ask for forgiveness for their sins, and who can forgive sins except Allah, and are never obstinate in persisting knowingly in they have done. For such the reward is forgiveness from their Lord, and gardens with rivers flowing underneath, an eternal dwelling. How excellent a recompense for those who work! Quran, Surat 3, Ayat 134-136 Allah did aforetime take a covenant from the children of Israel, and we appointed twelve captains among them. And Allah said, I am with you. If ye establish regular prayers, practice regular charity, believe in my messengers, honor and assist them, and loan to Allah a beautiful loan. Verily I will wipe out from you your evils, and admit you to gardens with rivers flowing beneath. But if any of you, after this, resisteth faith, he hath truly wandered from the path or rectitude. Quran, Surat 5, Vanya 12 As in life there are many trials which one must face. This is also a condition individuals must encounter in order to enter Jannah. Or do ye think that ye shall enter the garden without such as came to those who passed away before you? They encountered suffering and adversity, and were so shaken in spirit that even the messenger and those of faith who were with him cried, When the help of Allah, ah, verily, the help of Allah is near. Quran, Surah 2, Ayah 214 Did ye think that ye would enter heaven without Allah testing those of you who fought hard and remained steadfast? Quran, Surah 3, Ayah 142 The Quran also asserts that those who reject the prophets of God with their best knowledge are damned in afterlife and if they reject in front of the messenger of God, then they also face dreadful fate in this world and in afterlife. Conversely, a person who discovers monotheism not having been reached by a messenger is called Hanif. Quranic Names of Paradise Fear Doors, the highest gardens of the paradise. Dar al makamah the home. Dar al-Salam, home of peace. Dar al akira the home in the hereafter. al jana this is the most commonly used term in the Quran and Hadith. Janat al-Adn, gardens of everlasting bliss. Janat al-Qud, the eternal gardens. Janat al-Mawa, garden of abode. Janat al-Narim, the gardens of delight. Makad al SIDQ, Assembly of Truth. Al Makam al Amin, the House of Security. Non Muslims in Jannah. A few hadith, for example those narrated by Sal bin Sa'd, Abd Allah ibn Abbas, and Abu Huraira, suggest that some who were born before Islam, during the period of ignorance, would be allowed into heaven without a full reckoning of their behavior. The period of ignorance is believed to be those monotheists who lived between the time of Isa's ascension and before the time of Muhammad's prophethood. Another hadith states that one certain sect of Christians and one sect of Jews will enter Jannah. A.W.F. Ibn Malik reported that Muhammad said, The Jews split into 71 sects, one will enter paradise and 70 will enter hell. The Christians split into 72 sects, 71 will enter hell and one will enter paradise. By him in whose hand is my soul, my Ummah will split into 73 sects. One will enter paradise and seventy-two will enter hell. Someone asked, O Messenger of Allah, who will they be? He replied, The main body of the Muslims. The reason for this is Allah says in the Quran, the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. Also in another verse, he says, If anyone desires a religion other than Islam, never will it be accepted of him, and in the hereafter he will be in the ranks of those who have lost. No other religions will be accepted in the sight of Allah because he chose Islam to be above all other religions. Doors of Jannah According to Hadith, there are eight doors of Jannah. Their names are as following. Bab al-Salah For those who were punctual in prayer. Bab al-Jihad for those who took part in jihad, 
Bab al Sadakar, for those who gave charity more often, Bab al Rayyan, for those who fasted, Bab al Ajj, for those participated in the annual pilgrimage, Bab al Kazamin al Gahaz wa al Afin and al Nas, for those who withheld their anger and forgave others, Bab al Aman, for those who by virtue of their faith are saved from reckoning and chastisement, Bab al Dhikr, for those who show zeal in remembering God, 